Welcome everybody to another screencast. Our topic today is the grassroots civil rights movement. So our learning outcomes, you should be able to describe how sit-ins advance the civil rights movement. Secondly, describe the similarities and differences between the different grassroots civil rights movements. And lastly, explain the Freedom Riders and the effect it had on exposing the true colors of the South. So let's get this thing started. First off with CORE, the Congress on Racial Equality, founded by James Farmer in 1942 during World War II. It, created, it was created to confront urban segregation in the North, which is basically de facto segregation. Housing, jobs, restaurants, de facto requires a change in attitude, not a change in law. Uh, this is absolutely racist tendencies here. In that same year that it was founded, 1942, it's going to stage its first sit-in at a segregated Woolsworth lunch counter. Uh, by the 1960s, after it, it had been successful in desegregating some lunch counters, they turned to registering black voters, and that's going to be the main the the main focus of these civil rights move of of a lot of these civil rights organizations by uh, the 1960s. The SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, its purpose was to carry on nonviolent crusades against the evils of second-class citizenship, and that's basically what is going on with African Americans. Again, starting in 1954 with Linda Brown, this is finally the time where change is being addressed. For 50 years, we've just ex accepted the Jim Crow South, and now these people are trying to change that. The SCLC is going to use churches as the base of their operation. They're going to advocate boycotts and nonviolence. Martin Luther King is going to be the ele be elected as the first president. Uh, this is pretty close to immediately following the Montgomery Improvement Association's boycott of the municipal bus system and basically financially crippling it uh, for that one year that they did not ride the buses. Uh, you can see here is Martin Luther King outside the SCLC office, and here's a pin from the SCLC, and you can see the hands there with black and white both uh, together. And really, Martin Luther King believes that changes, the only way that change is going to happen is for it to happen together as one. Next up, we have SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. They are going to harness student protests as their main form of resistance. They're a little bit more confrontational than the SCLC. Uh, they still are advocating the nonviolence, but they're going to be a, lot, a little bit more in your face than the SCLC. In 1960, they're also going to go along with the sit-in form of resistance at the Woolsworth White-only lunch counter. By late 1960, these students were able to desegregate lunch counters in 48 cities, which is not bad for one year of work. By the late 1960s, it is going to turn to segregated voting rights uh, a few years after this. By the mid-1960s, we're also going to see the uh, SNCC dropping the nonviolent part of their name and turning the N to National, Student National Coordinating Committee, because they're going to start to see that this nonviolent form of resistance is not really working as quickly as they wanted to. Basically, they are turning to a more militant form of resistance. You can see here, this is what is going on at a Woolsworth lunch counter. People would take sodas, uh, milkshakes, ketchup, mustard, whatever that it is, and dumping it on the uh, students' heads. You can see the white guy there in the front. Uh, and it, these restaurants, or these Woolworths, and the other segregated uh, restaurants, what they're going to do is if you've ever been to maybe like Ruby's or something like that where you have that lunch counter, that's kind of what we're talking about here. They would take the stools away so that people couldn't sit down. They would raise their prices. They would try to do anything and everything to get people to not do the uh, stage these sit-ins, but it really didn't, it didn't stop um, SNCC from doing this. Now, Freedom Riders, 1961. This is a ride from Washington, D.C. all the way down south to Mississippi. This was a test in the interstate ban of segregated bus seats. They know they're going to face violence. They have a pretty good idea of what they're going to be uh, expecting here. They're actually hoping for a violent reaction because just because the Supreme Court says we are not going to have segregated buses anymore doesn't mean that the South is actually going to follow this unless it's being enforced. Okay? So what they're hoping for is for a violent reaction and to get Kennedy to actually enforce the law, force the the interstate bus desegregation. So at the Alabama state lines, there's going to be a white mob that's going to raid bus one. They're going to beat riders with chains and brass knuckles. At the Birmingham bus terminal, they're going to meet more resistance. Now these people, these people are going to be sitting in the white waiting room. 
uh, they're going to force the hand of the white Southerners. This is where bus one's ride ends. Uh, you can see here, this is actually bus two with the fire bombing. Uh, the bus company is going to actually say, I'm not taking you any further. You can see in this picture in the bottom left here, this is the beating outside of the waiting room. You can see here's another picture of the firebomb on the bus. So, bus two. Firebomb bus two, as you just saw in that picture. The bus company refuses to continue taking these people down south. SNCC is going to step in and take over. In Birmingham, the police are going to pull these people off the bus, beat them, and drive them to the Tennessee state line, where they're told, do not ever come back to Alabama. Well, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to go immediately back to Alabama there and occupy that white bus terminal. This is now going to be national news. Kennedy is going to have to send 400 marshals down south to basically enforce the desegregated, desegregation of the bus system. So the result is segregation is going to be banned in all interstate travel facilities, waiting rooms, restrooms, and lunch counters. This is exactly what these Freedom Riders wanted. And what it's going to do is showcase the racism that is still going on in the North despite federal legislation and Supreme Court rulings. Now, the Freedom Summer. Mississippi is considered the most racist state in the Union at this point. Corn and SNCC are going to turn their focus on registering African American voters, and Mississippi is one of those areas that they're going to really, really focus on. Their form of resistance during this registration process is nonviolent. Most of the volunteers are white. These are white people that are believing in the law and equality. Even white people are going to be met with violent resistance by other white Southerners, Mississippi uh, residents. And just like we've talked about before, the violent resistance is, is coming from, it could be anybody, it could be the police, it could be random citizens. These white people are also going to be met with violent resistance by other white people. It could be the sheriff, it could be anybody else in town. The simple fact is, if you were hoping to get or working for African American civil rights, you were the enemy as far as these white people are concerned. In 1964, three civil rights workers are killed, two of those being white. You can see here uh, in this uh, FBI poster. There was a film that was made about this called Mississippi Burning. Um, I think it's a really great film. You can see 1964 when America was at war with itself. Also coming out of the Freedom Summer, over the 10-week project to register African-American voters, four civil rights workers in addition were killed, uh, one of them in a head-on collision. At least three Mississippi blacks were murdered because of their support for that civil rights movement. Four people critically wounded. 80 Freedom Summer workers were beaten, and again, a lot of them being white. Uh, 1,062 people were arrested, volunteers and locals. 37 churches were bombed, and 30 black homes and businesses were bombed or burned as well. So this is despite the violent resistance, these people were still working towards uh, the civil rights movement for African-American people. So if you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.